Thank you for tuning in. So who are we and why do we deserve to be considered by you? Sutherland was founded in 1986 and is a $1 billion turnover of a BPO company headquartered out of New York State. We have 35,000 employees in the Americas, Europe and Asia, and importantly, we're still after all that time privately owned. This gives us the flexibility to try new stuff without the pressure of quarterly reporting schedules, hence the innovation labs of which we're part. The way we operate is also slightly different from what you may have seen in the past. When Sutherland delivers integrated BPO, we're delivering services integrated into the front, middle and back offices of our customers. Most other providers talk about integrating down through the technology stack. But as was discussed in a recent conference, for many, a new technology platform is but a telephone call and a credit card away. And that's a great quote. Although this is a generalization, it does not apply to many established companies. The very utility nature of technology is becoming so commoditized that the business leaders are now able to focus more time on actually doing business. Our raison d'etre is to look at the future of outsourcing and shared services and how we can more rapidly help customers. To do that, we start with a simple question. What do companies really want? On this ridiculously busy slide by analyst firm HFS Research are the results of a survey answered by 312 companies. You can see that all of the things outsourcers have been trying to sell for the past 10 years have become expected. No, not expected, demanded, just to start a sensible conversation. The table stakes, as they say. As business leaders, we know that your board are expecting exactly the same things from you, but we think you can go further. We believe that you can also provide your company with the differentiators the outsourcers are only just being, beginning to deliver, particularly when it comes to automation. The journey to automation has traditionally been the preserve of your IT departments. They believe that Nirvana will be reached when you have a globally integrated, single instance enterprise resource planning platform. Indeed, technology providers have been in cahoots with consulting companies for the past 15 years to sell this dream. In our conversations with companies, we always ask whether they've embarked upon this journey, and the answer is generally yes. We then ask when it will be complete. And you know, it doesn't matter how long they've been implementing these systems. The answer is always the same, three years. Recognising that a fully integrated system has some way to go, many companies have plugged the gaps by moving work to low-cost countries because, let's face it, it's been cheaper. Just in India, there are now over 3 million people employed carrying out transactional processes, providing what Cathy Tornbull of Gartner describes as cheaper fingers. However, with so many people now based in offshore operations, the war for talent has led to dramatic wage inflation. If you add currency fluctuations, socio-economic changes, and latterly a perceived dropping in quality as a result of FTE-based pricing models, then it's no wonder that companies are seeing the value of labour arbitrage as being unsustainable. Indeed, Ilan Oshri, Professor of Globalisation and Technology at Loughborough University, has found that 40% of the 200 US and UK companies he polled have reshored work over the past three years, leaving transactional lights-on activity with offshore providers, but bringing higher value elements back home. But cost and quality are not the only factors. Some of the smartest business leaders have realised that they can reduce errors and increase the efficiency of their functions by replacing people altogether through the use of robotic process automation. So what is robotics? There are many definitions, but put simply, it uses robotic software platform, not real humanoid robots, rather than people to move information through and between different technology systems. RPA works through the user interface, so it does exactly what users do, with a username, password, virtual mouse, keyboard, screen and so on. And importantly, it also uses all of the existing business rules you've built up over time. What that means is that you have to change neither the underlying technology nor the process itself, even if those processes vary in the same company between different countries. The robots simply watch what humans do, repeat it for humans to check, and when everyone is comfortable, the robots just do it across geography, across industry, and in all business streams or towers. Because there's no need to integrate them into your various technology systems, and because the processes themselves don't need to be re-engineered, Implementation is very fast and carries absolutely no additional security or process risk to your operation, even in highly regulated environments.
The benefits of this are manifold, but basically they boil down to cost, quality and control. The minimum cost of a robot is roughly a third that of an offshore person. It operates 24 hours a day and between 4 and 20 times faster than humans. And providing it's configured correctly, it doesn't make mistakes. A couple of interesting points. Firstly, an essentially free byproduct of robotics is that every step in the process is recorded. So instead of information sitting in people's heads, you end up with data on everything, meaning that audits take an hour rather than a week. This again is particularly important if you operate in increasingly highly regulated financial or other environments. Secondly, if you have peak periods of activity during the year, new robots can be switched on and be fully functional within 20 minutes. You try doing that with people. Let's take a look at how it works at a high level. If you're like most companies, your existing systems and processes sit at the heart of your operation. Above that, you have your various workflow tools, and above that, your analytics. Binding these elements together, you have people, acting as the glue, providing manual interventions, cutting and pasting between systems, cleaning the data, handling exceptions, and so on. By using robotics, most of the manual interventions are automated. We say most, because there are still things at which humans are better. Pattern recognition, indexing handwritten notes, or getting information buried in long email trials, for instance. That's why you'll still see some red elements. And because the robots are only producing clean data, the manual effort currently required between the workflow and analytics is no longer required either. From a process standpoint, instead of being located in a low-cost delivery centre offshore, the robots sit in two fully secure and resilient onshore data centres. The robots access your systems in the same way that any outsourcer would, over a Citrix connection, to give you full security and to avoid any further work needed on your side. The robots learn software in the same way that people do. So once it's been taught how to interact with one screen or system, the next time it sees that screen, it knows how to use it. For those technically minded, this is done using an object-oriented approach. The robots also don't have to do everything. They can take over at a certain point of the process, or they can pass the case out to a person if the case meets certain rules, i.e. if a customer is a VIP, etc. How does Sutherland's operating model differ from technology provider or system integrator? On the extreme right, you have the systems which people use today. They're labelled A, B, C and D. Next to those, you have the Citrix environment. This is not always the case, and doesn't need to be, but most customers who use BPO use Citrix. And our ability to work with Citrix means that we can substantially reduce the cost and work involved in our clients switching to robotics. This, by the way, is very unusual. Next, you have the robotics platform, where the virtual machine sits, and next to that, we have our proprietary Swift robotics platform. This is the interface where the people and robots providing management information and the screens to load work into the platform and to take exceptions out to be handled manually. Let's take a look at how this is working in practice. What you're seeing here is an order as it moves through the workflow system to the robotics platform. The robot is checking the order, pulling data from several systems, checking the billing and delivery addresses, bank details, other customer information, and that there are no duplicate orders. It then allocates the order to different warehouses, depending on what type of hardware it is, on whether there are any additional services or software. It then moves back to the workflow platform, the user checks that there are no exceptions, and hits go. What previously took over 20 minutes now takes a few seconds, and without error. By the way, we slowed the video down to about half speed, so you could actually see it working. Impressive as this is, how has the client in this case benefited? Our largest RPA client turns over $57 billion, but their order processing system is over 20 years old. They've tried to change the system six times over this period, but every time the cost and risks were just too high. Instead, they threw bodies at the problem. For this captive global operation, even after driving as much cost out and efficiency in, they still had just under 1,000 FTEs carrying out these transactions. The company had even moved 96% of these individuals to low-cost countries, pulling the labour arbitrage lever. So without something innovative, there was really no value that an outsourcing provider could add. The firm has been a client of ours since 2003, but when we approached them about robotics in October of 2013, they instantly saw the opportunity. 
We carved out the entire operation in February 2014 and have since achieved some quite startling results. A 53% reduction in headcounts to 438 people. A 23% reduction in cost, including giving the client 20% off its as-is cost from day one, i.e. instant return on investment. An increase in quality to 99% as the robots don't make mistakes. And probably most value, a 5% reduction in attrition as the remaining people are now working and doing higher value work. Incidentally, the company is so pleased with these results that they've transferred another 300 FTEs. Anyway, let's go back to the HFS slide. If you're looking to earn your keep as business leaders in the rapidly evolving global markets and to expand your influence, you need to offer your board the very same differentiators that outsourcers are pursuing. And robotics may well be the answer. So what's the next step? Think about the processes where you have the largest number of people doing the most manual tasks and based on the answers to six key questions, we can provide you with a rough idea of the savings in FTEs you can expect instantly. Once we have this high level data, we will carry out a deep dive into your and throughout your processes to map the most suitable for rapid assessment. The purpose of the rapid is to go through the processes or process chosen at the most granular level, step by step, and covering each and every action taken by the users. This is what our team of robotics engineers then use to program the robots. At the same time, this also provides you with a business case for you to take to your board for approval to move to a robotics-enabled BPO proof-of-concept pilot. Assuming you proceed, this business case and the rapid deliverables are provided to you at no charge. We believe this allows you to try out robotics quickly and at very low upfront cost. The way we approach outsourcing in this way, as we've said, marks us out as being slightly different from the norm. The combination of deep industry knowledge, happy BPO customers, and unleashing the power of robotics is a heady mix. You could, of course, go to one of the technology providers like Blue Prism or Automation Anywhere, and you could build it there yourselves. But that will require a large investment in time and skill development. You could go to one of the global BPO providers like Accenture or TCS, but they will still probably want to move the operation offshore to maintain their expected margins. Sutherland is an alternative that might just suit your needs. Thank you.